Twitter place. Um, I talk about politics on stage usually. I talk about what's going on in the world, which is another way of saying that you've never heard of me. Um, but uh, given that for an act, usually, you know, what that really means is career-wise, my biggest and highest calling is going to be one guest shot on Politically Incorrect, uh, talking about John JonBenet Ramsey with, like, Deepak Chopra and the chick from Showgirls. <laughs> I really play my cards right, I make it to come back and convince Pat Sajak not to invade Cuba. <laughs> really swell. Uh, what I'm actually talking about feeling right now, I'm feeling very old at the moment. I turned 35, which wouldn't be a big deal in most places in the world. But, well, see, a friend of mine, a very attractive young lady, uh, is 34. She's getting cosmetic surgery to look younger. Uh, yeah, I mean, but in this town, you know, because uh, I'm afraid she's going to turn into one of those Beverly Hills lizard people, you know? The, the ones whose faces are stretched so tight they can't even blink because their ears are going to pop off at any moment. You've seen these people walking around, it looks like their nose came from a completely different edition from their face. You know, like Microsoft came out with, like, Face 2.0. And they, like, didn't get all the update discs, you know? I'm really afraid that's what's going to happen to her. Uh, I don't know, I probably shouldn't worry about my aging, because, you know, we're here in Hollywood where... Well, you, you guys know the big fantasy movie that's coming out, right? The, the really big fantasy science fiction movie. I'm not talking about Star Wars, I'm talking about Sean Connery nailing the chick from Zorro. <laughs> this planet. I'm sorry. With an age difference like that, that makes Jerry Seinfeld look almost healthy. I mean, that's just not... Okay, I'll give you Star Wars. I mean, have you guys been to the line? Have you been up to Hollywood? Have you seen the big Star Wars line where they use the force? Use some soap. They've been living outside for a month, huddling in like four layers of Battlestar Galactica t-shirts, you know, pretending they're on an ice planet somewhere. You know? God's sake, they look like Kosovo refugees with acne. You know? Like some Chilean soccer team crashed in the Andes, you know? And they're sitting around trying to remember what side dish goes with goalie, you know? They're just, you know? <laughs> that is my favorite joke so far, thank you. It was fun. So, yeah, anyway, so what else is going on in the world? I, um, uh, while well, they're living outside, they're ready for Y2K. I guess that's a bonus. Are you guys getting ready for Y2K? Everybody? Yeah, let me, trust me, I'm an electrical engineer. I have my degrees in electrical engineering. It's not going to mean squat. Um, and by the way, that would be more impressive, except I got my degree uh, in 1984, uh, which means I'm really up to speed on cutting-edge technology from 15 years ago. Um, basically, if you need someone to program in Java, I can't help you. But, uh, you know, if that Pong game breaks down, I'm the man to call. Macintosh G3, out of luck, Commodore 64. I'm on the case. Because, you know, that thing's got enough memory to hold a graphic. A powerful computer. People are always surprised there's so much pornography on the internet. Uh, I went to college with the geeks who later designed the internet. Uh, these guys couldn't get laid with, like, a silk suit, a roll of hundreds, and a whole bucket of Rohypnol. <laughs> Pornography's what the internet's for, trust me on this. And I'm not advocating, I don't approve of pornography, okay? I mean, I, I enjoy it, sure. But I don't approve, if you understand. You know, the, the whole country is so screwed up about our attitude story. Did you hear the state of Alabama was going to ban sex toys for the whole state? Did you hear that story? That is, that's like so typically American that, 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 that we could you can actually... And by the way, you know, if you outlaw sex toys, then only the outlaws will have sex toys. <laughs> Why make crime any more fun than it is? You know, uh, I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. You know, the, 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 uh, uh, and by the way, it was going to be punishable. Owning a vibrator was going to be punishable by a year in prison. And what better way to clean up your sexual act than a year in prison? That's logical thinking. The Attorney General of Alabama came out and told the world that there's no constitutional right to own a vibrator. Of course, handguns are fine. You know. But a vibrator, that could cause some harm. You know. That's the Second Amendment, constitutional right. You know, if, if the vibrator could kill, there would be a constitutional right to own it. But if it was that dangerous, cops would already have them. You know, guys would be like Robin Banks. So give me all your money. Oh, <laughs> Alter, I'll pleasure you in the groinal region. <laughs> it just makes no sense. The whole country's screwed up with sex. We just had the big impeachment thing where, you know, I love that the GOP was trying to bring America back to a time where if you wanted to have, you know, innovative sex with an assistant, you had to be director of the FBI. <laughs> I like that. Did you guys see the hearings? Was it just me? A lot of the Southern senators started making me think that maybe Sling Blade was a documentary. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, from the great state of Arkansas, Representative Carl. Let, please welcome. And she touched you in a happy place. People, it's just going to happen, you know. I mean, Bill Clinton is a world leader, you know. They do a Caesar, you know. I came, I saw, I conquered. You know, Clinton, slightly different order. <laughs> Basically the same thing. <laughs> oh man, so that, that whole Columbine thing is uh, is scary. Did you see Charlton Heston's reaction to the Columbine shootings? Did you see this? That we should arm the teachers. They could fire back. That would make the world a safer place. And you know, more guns does equal more safety. Uh, you know, if, if West Side Story uh, would have, you know, it would have had a happy ending if Natalie Wood had just been packing an Uzi. You know? <laughs> If only, uh, I, I, love the, I, I love the reaction. Bill Clinton is standing out there in, uh, uh, in front of the world saying, um, uh, you know, we got to teach our kids that violence is not the answer. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to bombing Yugoslavia. <laughs> you know, and now they're, they're, they're housing the uh, Kosovar refugees in uh, New Jersey. <laughs> Haven't these people been through enough? <laughs> You know, sometimes the punchlines just write themselves when you read it right there in the newspaper, I gotta tell you. That was, that was the easiest joke of the week. Uh, you know, it just, it, 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 you, know, I, I, I went, you know, I went to one of these survivalist guys, you know, the, the guys who were like, really, you know, terrified of the government, the one world government's gonna come get us all. I went up to, um, and by the way, it was up in the hills like two hours from here. The proper term isn't hick, it's uh, Jethro American. <laughs> So I, go, I was going to tell you about Y2K. I went to this Y2K convention, and there's all these guys. You've seen them, big bug-eyed, excited. You know, we're going to make it. Yeah! You know, the world's going to end. We're going to be all right. They got the, you know, the camouflage and the whole, you know. And a lot of it's like militia people, white supremacist types. You know, with the. Um, do you ever notice the real white supremacists are always like the most inbred looking? Do you ever notice they're like, we got to preserve the purity of the white race. <laughs> High five, Scrod. Yeah. <laughs> well, you preserve that purity over there. Uh, over, over here. I saw this one guy on TV after the Jasper uh, dragging thing, and he was on TV. He's like wearing hip waders, big gut out to here. You know, he's like, I don't want any black people around me. <laughs> uh, not to worry. <laughs> Dude, I don't see a line forming, really. <laughs> there was a guy on who was uh, uh, saying that, uh, they, 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 they were talking about the Columbine thing. A guy was head-to-toe wearing camouflage clothing and had a big bright orange triangle right over the top of it. You know, he says, I don't want anybody to see me, except every living thing. <laughs> no, I think he was just trying to tell Jerry Falwell that he's gay. Uh, that's my thing. Did you see that about the Teletubbies? Uh, you know, anything with a triangle, gay, you, you know, right? You see, to Tinky Winky had the triangle, therefore gay. Is that the connection? Anything with a triangle is gay. Sure, Jerry's right. Sure. Uh, Delta Airlines, gay. <laughs> you can't fly to Cincinnati or Atlanta without having anal sex. It's just... It's a rule. Look at the back of your ticket. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs, got the arrowhead? Gay. Whole team. Anything with a triangle. Uh, the play button on your CD? Gay. Fast forward, double gay. You know, Jerry Falwell's looking for the sex in the Teletubbies. Look, forget the triangle. Let me help you out here, Jerry. Dipsy's the one with the foot-long shaft coming out the top of his head. Like John Holmes of children's television. You know? I have never... It's a foot-long and standing straight up. I have never been that erect in my life. And now you know too much about me, and I'm done. Thanks, I'm about